Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today, I'm going to show you how to make paper bows that are three-dimensional and easy, no tools required. I hope you'll stay tuned. Well, the first thing I want to show you are things you don't want to do. And the thing you don't want to do is you do not want to use a paper that's kind of cardboardy. I don't know if you can see this, but it, it ends up having, instead of having rounded edges, you basically have creases and you'll have like bends and you won't, it won't look good. Can you see this in the center where it looks so bad? You don't want that. You want a paper that's pliable like this is. And you're going to be bending it around things, but you just want to make sure that your paper is pliable. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to fold your paper in half. My paper is 12 inches long by one and a half inches top to bottom. And you want to get your scissors and you're going to cut this so it looks more like a tag at the top. You're going to take it and you're just going to cut like that. I'm going to do the other side to hopefully match it up. Let's see, that's about it. If it's not perfect, that's okay. And in my case, if it's super off, you can just fix it like that. See how I've made this look like a tag at the top? Then what you're going to do is you're going to fold your edges, your ends, back up to the middle like this on both sides. Fold them to the middle. And then you want to Get them creased down. If you need to use your bone folder, you can do that. I'll show you what it looks like after I get it creased because I don't want you to think I'm just going to crease it and go on to the next step. You're going to have yours looking like this. I guess it's a W. You see that? Your middle fold you're going to leave in place. But these two ends that aren't cut, you want to take your scissors, make sure they're well lined up. You're going to take your scissors and you're going to do the same thing again. You're going to cut it so it looks like a tag. If your paper's thick, you can always cut them one flap at a time. I'll show you that. I'll do it this one that way so you can see. So I'm going to cut this one. I have to fix this one because it's a little bit wonky looking. That's better. Okay, then you're going to lay this up to your other end. You see how now we have the pieces I've cut? So you want to just make all of them line up. Same it this side. We're going to fix them both. And then I'll show you what it looks like after I've cut this much off. You can do this with any size paper you want. Obviously, 12 inches is probably the biggest you're going to be able to do, but you could probably tape two 12-inch pieces together and make a 24-inch piece. So now your piece is going to look like this. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, next step. You're almost done. I think glue dots are the best way to put this together, but that's just my thought on it. You're going to take something that is um, big around or as big around as, maybe I'll use my pokey tool, as big around as you want your ends of your or your um, bow. Um, I don't know what you call that part of the bow. This part of the bow. This loop. You want something that's that's round that you can mold it around. You can do, you could use a crochet needle or anything that's round basically, cylindrically round, like a big pen, a marker. Yeah, some of your markers would work great for this. Have to be round though, they can't be different shapes. Okay, so we got those bent so that they're round. We're going to go back to our center again, and this time I'm going to put glue dots 
on either side of the middle piece. And then I'll show you why you do that in just a second. Okay. So I have a glue dot right there and a glue dot right here. So that piece that you just bent, you want to bend it up to the center and push it into the glue dot. Then this piece will go back on itself. Same with this side. This is why we did the bending so that it would lay perfectly onto that glue dot. Then these are your flaps that are going to go like this. You don't need them to be this long. So we're going to cut off, I'm going to cut off about an inch off either end. And don't throw those away because you're going to want to use those. Well, one of them. Doesn't matter if these aren't exactly straight. Then the next thing I do is I take another glue dot and I put it behind my loop and then I lay that on it so that the sides are glued down. Same on this side. Glue dot. Doesn't have to be placed anywhere specifically. You just want to have it so that it can hold that down. Then you're going to take one of these pieces that you cut off and I'm going to cut it in half because I think that would be wide enough. And then we're going to use that for our centerpiece. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to kind of bend it around this so that it starts to form a shape. Like that. Then I'm going to put a glue dot in the center on the back. If you have a bigger glue dot, I'm using smaller glue dots. Sometimes they aren't big enough to um, hold both ends, so I'm going to put two glue dots in the middle, and I'll show you those in a second. Okay. I hope, hopefully you can see that. Do you see there's two glue dots in the back? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little, um, my little, we'll call it center piece. I don't know what it's called in real life. Do bows have terminology for these different things? And I'm attaching one end of it to the glue dot on the back. Then I'm going to try and loop it around, but not make it so tight to the bow that um, that it um, looks like a flat piece. And I'm going to squeeze that into the glue dot on the back. And then I'm going to try and puff it up a little bit on the front. The other thing you can do is you can grab your... Um, loops and push in from the sides and this will make it stick up more. We're pushing in from the side and that makes it that high. And if you need more glue dots to hold the back piece in place, you can just add another one in there, but I think mine are holding. Then we're going to create our little um, flag ends. You're going to cut into the center, and this is easy because it's got these lines so you know where the center is. And I'm only going to cut down about that far, maybe that's three quarters of an inch maybe. Then you're going to start on the bottom, center plate piece on an angle, and again from the top, I don't know if I cut up far enough with that, with my center cut. Then you're going to do the same on the other side. Cut into the center, then from the top down. I'm going to make you a small one too so you have an idea of the dimensions. The scissors I'm using are Tim Holtz, they're mini snips. I like these very much for uh, cutting through thicker materials. And there is our bow. It's a lot more three-dimensional than these, and the reason is because these are those cardboard ones, and you can it's almost impossible to squeeze those back up to make them um, puffier. But here's one, I'm stuck on this little fella. Here's one that is out of uh, similar paper to this, and all you do, again, is you just push in on your end of your, of your, um, loop and then see how high that made it. It's pretty cool. So let me show you how to make a smaller one. I'll tell you the dimensions on this. I think this is about five inches. 
it's about five and a half inches and it's three quarters inch tall. You're going to fold it in half. Make sure that it's exactly in half if you can. And then you want to squeeze it down. And then you can, you can use your bone folder if you choose. This one, my knitting needle will make more sense for the loop because it's a smaller size round. Then you're going to cut your tag pieces. I'm, um, I make huge tag pieces. I don't know why, but I just seem to really get into making those big cuts. Okay, then you're going to fold this back to the center like that and fold this back to the center so now let me open it so you see what it looks like at this point so at this point it looks like this you've got the cut in the middle and then you have the two pieces on the end that are not cut don't cut into the middle where this is already cut See where this one's already cut down? Don't cut these. They need to stay like they are. You're only going to work on the other end, which is this one. And again, if you need to open it up and only cut one at a time, that's fine. Or you can cut both at once if you can hold them and cut at the same time. I'm going to try and hold and cut at the same time. Okay, let's see. Let's go with... Yep, another hugely exaggerated um, cut. I don't know why I can't cut little ones, but it's just not in my nature apparently. I'm going to open it up and show you what it looks like again. It's going to look like this. Then you're going to take your middle two pieces and you're going to wrap that around something small. In this case I'm going to use my knitting needle. And we're just going to try and make a nice, smooth fold. If it starts to crease, just keep folding it around it so that hopefully you can work that out. And on this side, same thing. You want to fold it around your hook, hook, knitting needle. I make up a different name for it every time. Okay. We're going to get our pieces or teeny tiny um, glue dots and again you're going to put a glue dot on either side of your center. So I'm going to put one right there and one on the other side. Oh, didn't want that one. And this one goes right there. And I'll show you these. Again, one on this side, one on that side. So then you're just going to pinch this down and line your ends up and then push this one down and try to line it up. If you have one of your pieces where you can see a lot of the back, you can always trim it off or you can turn it this way and maybe it looks better on this end. So then I'm going to cut off about that much on either end. We're going to add a glue dot under our loops. Whoops. There's a glue dot. I'm going to stick under that loop. Hopefully. Come off. Come on, glue dot. And then I'm going to push that into that side piece. And again, we can just make this puffier just by doing that. And I'm going to grab my... paper of my glue dots and I'm going to put it in the back of my other loop. be nice if it would just come off. Okay, so I'm going to put a glue dot back there and I'm going to shove that into it. So it looks like this at this stage. And then I cut these little tabs off. If you can make this curl That'd be great because you want to be able to have it curl around that centerpiece. 
and I kind of like do this so I can kind of make beginning of a fold for the back. Then you're going to want to put one of your glue dots on the very center on the back. And if it sticks up, like this glue dot is small, but if it sticks up like that, you just want to fold it down so it's not showing. And then you want to take your paper and wrap it. That might be too wide for what we're doing here. Mm, we're going to go with it anyway, maybe. So you can see all the different sizes. Okay. So then if you want your your loops to be thicker, again, you're just going to push on this side. And that might get rid of any creases you might have in your paper. And then again, on this side, we're going to push. And then that's going to give us a really dimensional one like that. Can you see that? If you can see my, my little um, loop that's supposed to be in the glue dot was not. So I pushed it around again. Then we're going to take and cut into the center and make one cut and another cut. Into the center again, cut at the bottom, cut at the top, put it in the current screen. And there we have a bunch of different bows in different sizes and different widths. So that should give you the idea of how to do this. And if you um, do it step by step the way I show you, you should be fine. You can use wet glue, you could use tear tape, you can do basically um, any kind of uh, adhesive you want. I just found that the glue dots made it a lot simpler to show you. So I hope you enjoyed this, that you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.